My name is Brandon Hallman. I'm a salesman with Landmark Implement. Today we're going to talk about machine settings and some calibrations um, on this 780. I'm going to start on the left side of the machine and talk about some settings here. And then Lee's going to move over to the right side of the machine and go over some settings on that side. As Brandon said, I'm Lee. I'm a service technician here at the Center Store. We're going to cover hopefully some helpful and informational field settings and adjustments. So to start our walk around of this combine, one simple thing that everybody knows about but we seem to forget once in a while that I want to point out is we do have our grain tank covers underneath the left side of the machine as well as two on the right side of the combine. They're just a simple simple piece that bolts up to the bottom side of that, of that auger under there. Um, we just want to make sure those are closed before we go harvest anything because it will affect yield if we don't have those closed. As we move back on this side of the combine, we want to point out the rotor speed control lever up here. Uh, it is a two-speed setting and we want to make sure we're in the high speed for wheat. Obviously corn, we would go to the low speed. Indicated by a gauge up there but behind the lever, we do have one, two, and a neutral position on that as well. If we move back on the machine, We have our chopper speed drive here. Uh, this lever will change speed from high to low. Shoved in as low speed, pulled out is gonna be our high speed. For wheat, we'll want that in, in high speed to get the material out the back of the machine as fast as possible. Also on the chopper, we do have a, a set of stationary knives. Um, that is strictly personal preference, however you, you want that material handled coming out of the back of the machine. Uh, this wing nut is just loosened, and then with this adjustment lever here, we will just slide that knife bank in or out, depending on your, uh, your preference. As Brandon mentioned earlier, um, on some straw chopper um, adjustments, there's also adjustments back here with this power cast tailboard. You have a couple shields here on both sides that we can add or remove. Right now, they're all installed. Uh, you might want to remove them if you run into when you're doing a ground check um, when first getting started uh, you might have windrows out to the side and no material on the ground right here typically we'll end up removing these two outer shields to let more of that material exit these uh, discs and uh, the goal is to get all that material spread out so you have even uh, coverage on the ground. It'll help with uh, keeping the ground shaded. So that'll help with uh, moisture uh, conservation and it'll also help with some of the weed pressure. Up here there's a little chart and it's got like three little knives on it. What this is, it's a log vein adjustment. Um, it kind of helps divert some of the material coming out of the after it's exited the rotor. And basically you just take a socket and an extension and go through this hole and it tells you if you turn it this way, the mog veins go this way, turn it this way, and it's an adjustment so we can help divert more of that material to the left hand side of the straw chopper. That'll also help us with uh, getting our uh, material and our, and our mog mat um, distributed evenly out in the field. On the right side of the chopper, we also have this cob deflector door. Currently we're set in the corn position. Just pull this tab and we want to rock this lever to the front up here to the small grain position. Part of our integrated combine adjust, or ICA2, is we have a high-speed camera here on our tailings elevator and also a high-speed camera here on our clean grain elevator. And that allows us to get an in-cap view of what is actually in both elevators. And it's smart enough to detect cracked grain, material other than grain, and foreign material, and all that good stuff. Um, this is in the operational position. This one is open. Uh, there's a lens right here that may get dirty periodically, but it's just an easy little latch to uh, check it. Um, right here on the tailings elevator, we have 
another setting for large grain versus small grain. Um, right now we're in the large grain position. For wheat, we'll want to pull this out, break this down, and that brings our rasp plate in closer to our uh, rotor inside of our tailings elevator to help get a better better thrashing job on, the, on the, any of the tailings that we'd have in there. And this setting that I just showed is only on the class 8 and class 9 combines. Um, that's the only combines with the active tailing system. I also want to point out on the right side of the machine we do have grain tank covers for this side as well. There will be two on this side, one in front, one in back. These will just slide up and use these bolts to hold them up there. Don't forget to close them as well as you might lose grain out to bin if you don't. A couple of settings up here. Uh, we'll start at the front, work our way back. Drum stop. You can see we've got our arm down, so that means the drum's down. And we want that down for our small grain. Uh, Fader house drive chain right here. There's two uh, sprockets right here. And I'm going to go a little bit off of the beaten path a little bit because the good book will tell you to run it on this large sprocket for wheat. I recommend to run it on the small sprocket uh, for the simple fact that all we're doing here is changing the speed of that feeder house conveyor chain. And if we're not having any issues with feeding, we're going to be money ahead and get more life out of that conveyor chain if we run it just a little bit slower. So that's my recommendation there. On our feed accelerator, there's two set, two, uh, two pulleys for two speeds. We've got our slow speed out here. Fast speed is our little pulley on the inside. And for wheat, it's recommended to run that on the, uh, on the fast speed. And uh, <clears throat> while we're talking about speeds, a little food for thought um, as let's say we have a thin short wheat crop um, or the conditions progress as harvest goes along and we end up with a dry stock a brittle stock things like that we can actually run this back to the slow side and think of it this way our rotor its job is to thrash and separate well, if we're, if we're doing our thrashing right here, we're going to continue to make some more small pieces. And it makes more work for that shoe to get a good, clean uh, grain tank sample. So if we slow everything down, we're basically getting that crop mat into the rotor as one piece. So it kind of helps the rotor, and it really helps the shoe, and it'll definitely help your grain loss and your grain tank uh, quality. Okay, I'm Jake from Landmark. Uh... Today I'm going to be talking about some more in detail inside combine uh, adjustments for crop changes. So uh, this is S770, uh, so class 7 combine. So one of the first things to start out with on this machine is our drum height. Um, for wheat and small grains like this one is set for, there is a You'll want the drum in the lower position uh, for, for small grains, uh, especially your wheat, but any small grain, you want the drum in the lower position. For corn and, and bigger grains, you want it in the raised position. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. On, you do it on both sides, but there's an, lever, there's an arm right here. And if this arm is parallel to the ground then that means that it is in the lower position if this pin right here is up here and it's perpendicular to the ground that means the drum is in the raised position and to change it you just pull this out turn that screw and lift this pin up and install it up here so that is the raised the raised and lower position for inside the feeder house adjustment a little easier to see I say, if it's, per, if it's parallel to the ground, it's in the lower position. If it's perpendicular to the ground, it's in the raised position. And to adjust it, you just pull this pin out like, like this and raise it up 
So this pin is now in this hole and that would be the raised position for inside the feeder house. Um, if you're having trouble keeping your chaffer and sieve uh, load level even across your machine, there's a, there's a couple things here in this area that we can do uh, to help even that load equally across that chaffer and that sieve. Um, the, thing, the first thing I wanna talk about here is uh, inside on this shoe auger, and I'm only gonna show you the one side here but there is, there is, it is the same on the other side. But there's four bolts here in this shoe auger bed assembly. It's one, two, three, and four. And you don't have to take the bolts out, just loosen them up. All you gotta do is just loosen them. And once you loosen them, you can slide this plate right here that I got my hand on, this plate. You can slide this plate up or down. Right now it's in the lower position but it will slide up here about four inches and you can adjust that up or down to depending on if you want more of that more of that uh, chaff load in the center of your machine or say you're cutting on a lot of side hills and you're cutting one way and you're getting all the crop on one side of the machine you can you can uh, raise one side and lower the other side or or uh, do whatever you got to do to keep that chaffer, uh, keep the load equal, equal on that chaffer. And uh, you can, like I say, it is the same on the other side, the four bolts, loosen them up, and slide this plate up and down in here to equalize, to get that chaff to slide across that chaffer at an equal rate across, the, across it. So to help with your cleaning capabilities. That'll also help with, uh, you know, with your white caps and and getting chaff in the bin, uh, you know, the the even the more even we can make it on on the chaffer, the more the the better the bin sample is going to look for sure. So, uh, thing two we can do on a machine, um, on this machine here, it has what we call a side hill kit installed in here, and uh, the side hill kit raises puts these extra fins on here puts the fins on up in here on this pre-cleaner here and here and here and it's the same all the way across you can install them uh, as a field install kit to uh, keep it's a side hill kit to keep your crop level across the machine um, there is uh, with that kit there will be there will be plates that go in on the in on top of the chaffer and uh, there'll be four of those that go across there uh, there'll be one that goes here, one that goes there, and then two on the other side. And they keep that crop level across the machine, and that is called a side hill kit uh, that can be installed in the field on a machine to keep your crop leveled. Okay, uh, what we're going to do now is talk about some ground loss um, and some adjustments we can make and maybe where we're losing this grain if it's on the ground. I have three rubber pans back behind this combine. I'm going to call this the right hand pan because we're on the right hand side of the combine and it is right at the end of the header. So this would be just right at the edge of our cut crop. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these pans out and go cut over them. And I want you to cut 50 yards past the pans, come back, and then you can walk up pick up your pan, take it to the tailgate of your pickup, and you can look at what you got for material, cracks, and grain. And it's roughly a foot circle, so it does compare with our loss charts and our uh, handy slide chart. Uh, three pans, because there's three different ways we can lose grain out the back of these combines. So this far right hand pan, if we have a bunch of grain in there, it is coming from the rotor. This is strictly 90% rotor loss. Now the pan that's directly behind the combine, that'll be primary shoe loss. So it would be possible to have grain in this pan, but nothing in the other two. That way we know what we need to adjust. You know, it might be a, a concave clearance or a rotor speed issue that we need to fine tune. 
to do this ground check so we can calibrate our vision track inside our cab so it's telling us accurate information. Okay, this is a SCS adjustment guide. It's kind of a handy dandy go-to, you know, if you're having issues in the field. You have your crops up here, so let's just slide this out and go to wheat. And it kind of gives you a refresher course on feed accelerator strips, concaves, separator covers, um, feeder house chain speed. But if you remember, I told you to go on the little sprocket, not the big sprocket. Uh, feed accelerator, high. And it kind of gives you some nice barnyard settings on sieve, chaffer, concave, rotor speed, and all that good stuff. Now we can open this up, and it gives us a seed loss chart. And of course our crop type is wheat and here's our platform uh, we've got our different widths of platform and these numbers right here correlate to seeds per square foot with the combine in the wind row position so basically you're taking 36 feet here or 35 feet here and uh, you're harvesting it and you're putting it in a windrow back behind the combine and if you have 147 seeds in that square foot that equals a bushel an acre of loss. Now we open it up a little bit further and it kind of gives you some ideas on how to adjust and things we can change if we don't like what we're seeing in the grain tank or on the ground. And it opens up it's kind of a handy quick go-to you know something to maybe uh, get rid of your your second guess and your doubt on which way to go it's a handy dandy chart you can get it from the parts department you can do your tailings um, gives you more adjustments and then we finally get to the grain tank okay so uh, now we're going to talk about the concave section and some other inside combine adjustments inside this machine um, this machine is does have the large bar concaves in it which you would use for fall crop harvesting uh, your machine should be equipped with a slider card that will tell you which concave to use for which crop uh, if you do not have one contact our parts department and they will get one for you um, or otherwise you will also be able to find it in your operator's manual you will be able to find which concave to use for which crop but these are for reference these are the large bar concaves that are installed and over here uh, for video purposes I have a set of small wire concaves right here to show you guys so you can know the difference and uh, you'll notice that this is the these concaves are upside down but this is the front concave this is the middle concave and this is what we would call the rear concave and uh, I want to show you guys on these concaves today that we make John Deere makes several different uh, bundle kits for these concaves uh, this bundle kit that's on here is a BH 84534 again that's BH84534 and that kit is for the small wire concave so if you're doing uh, wheat and for wheat settings you'll want to put these plates on what we would call one two and five and how we get that is uh like I say, this is each one of these bars here is one is one. So if you count them up, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, now, like I said, I have these concaves upside down, so it might be a little confusing how I'm numbering them. But uh, it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The reason we put them on one and two is because we want to hold that green in the combine in the concaves and around the rotor and we we would uh, we put them on there so when the crop first comes in on this concave the crop that's on the bottom is forced to make the full rotation with the rotor so it uh, gets more threshing time and holds it in the machine longer so it does more threshing 
we put it on and that's we put it on number five on this machine because on this machine being a class seven machine um, this is where the tailings elevator drops back into your combine so uh, we want to put one on here so when the tailings elevator drops in to the rotor that it is forced to push that grain on around and and re-clean that grain instead of just dropping it straight through the concaves and never getting cleaned that wouldn't do us any good so we want to put this cover in here to force that grain around and get re re-cleaned and reworked before it comes back out of the combine combine um, this is this setup here works for class 7 combines and smaller uh, now your class 8 and 9 combines uh, they would have uh, what we call an active tailings on them so they it has a rethresher on on it that's what active tailings means it has its own its own separator system on the tailings elevator so therefore it wouldn't be dropping that grain back into back into uh, your comp caves so if this was a class 8 or 9 combine we would recommend that you put these three covers on one two and three and block this front con concave off and uh, force that grain on around it makes it more aggressive on your cleaning and uh, does a better job so uh, like I say for video purposes we recommend we we have these out so you guys can see them easier. If you have any questions on these kits, uh, don't hesitate to call your parts department or your service department. They do make they do make kits that are similar to this for the large bar con concaves. Uh, they also do make a large wire concave, and they also make these add-on kits for them as well. Uh, and they would be for different different crops for different settings, but for today. This is how we would want to set it up for a class seven and smaller combine for wheat. So this is, you'd have these concaves installed and for wheat purposes, you would want them on one, two, and five for a class seven and smaller. Class and uh, class eight and nine, you want them on one, two, and three. One other thing on, on, uh, on concaves is in this area is for for a, a wheat setting, uh, we recommend that uh, you run the small wire concaves. So you would follow your procedure in your operator's manual, but uh, I will briefly run you through it here. You basically uh, would remove this shield, remove this Z-bar, you remove all three concaves through this center section. Uh, you put all three concaves back in, the small wire concaves with your bundle kits on them or off of them. You can install the bundle kits in the machine, but it is a lot easier to do it out of the machine if you have that ability. Then once you have your concaves in, you put your Z-bar back on, you put this shield back on, and then, then when you go to tighten this Z-bar up, uh, you tighten the rear roll bolts first, then tighten the front row bolts second, then as you would look in your in your operator's manual all of this is in there on machine settings but uh, there is a procedure here you uh you want to adjust you want to use these adjuster rods the front one and the rear one and these stop bolts rear one front one to zero your concave clearance so what you would do is you loosen these two bolts loosen your jam nuts Close your concave till the worm gear is bottomed out. Then you adjust it till it clicks, back it off. Then you adjust this one till it clicks, back it off while you're rotating the rotor. Then you would uh, adjust this one again, back it off. Adjust this one again, back it off while you're rotating the rotor. And then once you have done that twice, then, then you set your stops so this bolt here is touching this Z-bar plate here such so that sets your stop position and then once you have completed that in your book the next step in your operator's manual it will tell you to perform a calibration for 
concave clearance. And that procedure will walk you right through it on the machine. You go into your calibrations, you go down to concave clearance, you select it, and you follow the on-screen instructions on zeroing the concave such that uh, you have a zeroed clearance. So you are getting the proper clearance setting to cut to harvest your wheat or your crop at. So like I said, that all them adjustments are in your operator's manual to look up and read more in detail. Moving front to rear here, uh, we have these cover plates. And for wheat, we recommend for wheat that you put three rows of four on for wheat. And I will show you how to take it out and put it in. Three rows of four. And to uh, install this cover, as you can see, it's... It's a pretty simple cover here, available through the parts department if you don't have a set. It's recommended to get a set for wheat. Uh, okay, put it underneath there, push it in, push it in on your handle, or your handle around so it lines up in the slot and locks it in. Uh, that is the procedure on, on putting those in. We recommend three rows on the left. I will show you what we recommend for them great covers on the right side. Uh, with the covers removed, the shields removed here, uh, we recommend two rows of four on the right side of the machine. Same cover, same great as the other side, just one, just one row less. Two rows of four, four rows, two across. Okay, <clears throat> talking about our vision track system right here, this is where our ground loss is displayed which is a calibratable uh, component we'll get to that in a little bit but let's talk about the bar graphs and what they mean on this side right above my finger that is shoe loss and there will be two separate bars here one for the left hand side of the shoe one for the right hand side of the shoe and the center here is what we call an efficiency graph and you actually want bars in this green area and then on this side is uh, rotor loss. So these three bars added together gets, gets us to our efficiency. And then of course, after we do our ground check, we'll come in, we'll recalibrate the system. That way it's telling you accurate information. On the far right hand side, this is just a tailings volume sensor. I'm going to show you how to get to the page where we can calibrate our vision track. Um, we've already done our ground loss. We've already, you know, verified that we like what we see on the ground, but we don't like what the machine is telling us. And we have to be harvesting while we hit this button. So let's say we did our first initial ground check at five miles an hour, and we liked what we saw on the ground. We'll go again and harvest at five miles an hour and just hit this calibration button. And then that'll make our bar graphs read correctly for what the, how the machine is actually performing. Okay, so we've moved over into an S670 with the seven inch armrest display. And so I just wanna show you um, just how to get to your simple calibrations on this display. This is our main work page here, and you'll see we've got our icons on the right side of the machine, F through J here, and a B there. All of our calibrations will be done through the B button on the right side of the screen. It'll pull up a calibrations page here next, and then in this box, you'll just touch in that box to bring up a list of all the different calibrations we can do on this machine. The two I want to point out mainly today are this mass flow vibration calibration and the header calibration. Anytime you start the machine, especially at the beginning of the season, you at least want to do this once and do this mass flow calibration um, and make sure that that's calibrated correctly uh, before you proceed through the year. Also, we want to do this header calibration. Um, that's going to calibrate our off-ground height sensors um, for this machine so that way we do have our automatic height control um, as well as, um, you know, even if we go into bean harvest down the road or we get into a short wheat crop of some kind, we may want to calibrate our off-ground height sensors as well as the cutter bar sensors. And this is where you would perform that job. Once you've selected that, 
you just go to this next button down here and it will walk you through the calibration process. Okay, I wanted to actually show you and touch on uh, a height sensing option that we can have on uh, we've had it as an option on all of our combines um, it even dates clear back to the 70 series uh, the 600 S's and the 700 S's as long as you have on a as long as you have a calibrated flex platform with off-ground height sensors and how we're going to use this is you have to go through change an address in the LC1 controller and run a full system calibration. It'll walk you through it. And as you can see right now, we have our number two button pushed on our hydro handle. Our number two icon is lit on our corner post. And we have an approximate height of 9.3 inches off the ground and as you can see our head is clearly off the ground and we would use this for normal cutting conditions and wheat uh, but let's say we get to some really short wheat or wheat that fell down and is laying on the ground all we have to do is hit this number three button you can see it changed from a height setting to a pressure setting and as you can see now, our platform is now on the ground running in flex mode. And let's say we get out of this wheat that's either down or short, and we want to go back to off-ground height cutting, we just hit two. There will be a little bit of a delay. But as you can see, that it starts to pick up the head, and the cutter bar starts to pressure back up. And then we can continue on about our operation. When uh, when you're in in the field for adjusting and you're you're going through the field and you're having trouble cleaning it and then you followed followed the flow chart uh, that comes with the machine and, and you're still having trouble with it, uh, one thing that we you can do is a what we call a power shutdown and it it will tell you in in the book how to do it, um, but but basically what it is is you're you're cut, going through the field cutting and. Uh, you just reach over and if you have a three-speed transmission pull your hydro handle to neutral shut your key off shut your separator and your header switch off wait till the engine completely dies then you'll start the combine right back up again let it idle and get out and take all your side shields off as this one is right here and uh so just start looking and see what the crop looks like as it's going through the machine you know uh Open your clean grain elevator, open your tailings elevator, look in on the rotor pan, look in on the ch on the shoe augers, look in on the chaffer, you know, look look out here by the wheel and see what it looks like uh, behind the header, look, look in front of the header and see what you're getting on the ground and uh, just start doing some comparisons and, and making some adjustments off of that. Uh, if you have a ProDrive transmission, what you're going to do for a power shutdown on that Hydro handle to neutral, shut the key off, you'll, you'll want to tap the brakes, turn your separator and your header switch off, set the brakes, start the machine back up and let it idle and then take all your covers off and the, the procedure is the same after that. So uh, then like I say, all the machine in your operator's manual, the power shutdown for, for your machine will have the appropriate steps needed to perform a power shutdown but we do recommend them if if you are having trouble clean getting your grain sample clean as you like it or your field residue clean how you like it uh, we do recommend doing a power shutdown so it is recommended uh so you can see where where you need to make the changes at so with that that pretty much concludes our little session on uh, combine settings and adjustments um, appreciate you watching this video if you have any questions, feel free to, look, to contact your local landmark dealer.